Wisteria 2 is terrible right now. If I'm being honest, I feel like this could have been prevented though if the game didn't release this fast. And when I say this, I'm I, I'm telling you 100% this is like no hate, no bashing to the developers. I personally like what they're doing currently and I'll talk about that later on inside the video. But this is just my personal criticism for the game based off of what I've played and some of the things that I feel like could have been done better to have a better release. So, so far with Stereo 2, it's been out for about a day or two right now and the game is pretty... It's, it's questionable that's that's what i'll say i think it's the best way to sum it up right now the game has been in development as early as may 29th which means it's been in development for around over a year now when you actually join the game and start playing it the main form of progression that you're going to be following is actually going to be the story mode and this is where the problems start to show off for the game now when you're in the early story it's not really that hard the early story mainly consists of you doing I guess errand type of quest where you would run around and you would simply just go from point A to point B and it's not really you beating up any bandits or boars or stuff like that. It's, it's actually really good the early game for Lucidia 2 if I'm being completely honest. However, once you get to a certain point, it's where the issues for the game actually start to show off. And the three issues that I am mainly going to be talking about for this part of the video is the issue with you being soft locked, the NPCs not spawning and there being no guidance whatsoever when you're doing certain quests. And to start off with the NPCs not spawning, I'm mainly talking about for Demon Slayer progression. I'm pretty sure it's the same <laughs> for Demon progression, but Demon progression is like terrible. For the Demon Slayer progression though, the NPCs not spawning has been an issue once you reach a quest called, I'm pretty sure it's the start of the Flesh Samples quest. Now, I was playing this game during testing, even though it was like one day before the game released, so I just consider that early access. I was playing the game during early access, and it was happening even inside the servers where there's like average six to four people. There just wasn't any NPC spawning. I would go over to the caves, and to actually find a certain amount of NPCs that you need in a cave sometimes, you would have to go all the way to the back. But I would go over to a certain cave, and I would just look for a certain demon because it's not like you can kill any demon and get the flesh samples you need a specific one that they assign to you and it's just like it becomes very tedious and actually just leads to you being soft locked from not being able to fight the npcs that you even need to progress it had led to me like running around the map for one to two hours trying to find the npcs that i have no idea what they look like or even to find them but i needed to move on to get to the next part of the game which would then create you being soft locked. And just in case you don't know what soft locking is, it's pretty much when you just reach a point inside the game where you can't move on because of something that I'm assuming is not supposed to be happening, is happening. So let's say that you needed to get to road B, just that there's a big brick between you and road B and you're on road A. You're inside of a soft lock until that big brick is either removed or, or fixed because you can't get to the next part of the game that you have to get to and that also contributes to the game being or just having no guidance whatsoever for the quest and with this point i'm actually more lenient on it because i feel like having a reason to explore in the game is a good thing if it's executed the right way when you get the quest to obtain the flesh samples which is i'm telling you this is one of the main quests where it's just a huge issue but when you get this quest there's certain demon types that you have no way of knowing what type of demon you have to kill or which of the caves you need to head into and that's just a whole issue of itself it's just that when you actually get to a certain cave you then have to fight off all of the demons inside the cave to even get to some parts so let's say that you just go to the first cave that's right near the spawn place right you have to beat the demons on each floor to get to the second part of the cave to try and kill those demons to see if those are the ones that you need. And if those demons aren't the ones that you need, you have to beat those demons and keep on progressing, killing the how much, much demons are there inside the certain part of the cave to get to the final or back part of the cave to see if those are the specific demons that you need. And when you're doing this quest, the only indication that you have if you're doing it right is if the counter goes up. So it's not like they give you like a color code for the demons or if there's like a small image slash piece of paper that you could look at to see which demons you actually need. You don't know which demons you actually need to kill 
unless you kill every single demon that you see and hope that it's the one that you need and this happened to me i'm pretty sure that one of my quests was at like four out of five and i didn't i didn't know which demon i was killing because the night that i got off before my progression was at zero out of five i woke up came back on the game and then all of a sudden it was at four out of five so it seems like my data just didn't load for the quest somehow and then it was four out of five and i had no idea which demons i killed because the night before i was running from the first cave to the second cave to the third cave trying to just kill anything and see if the counter would go up and then eventually i was just like you know what f it i just killed random demon on the side of the road literally and it just counted towards my quest and then all of these things they eventually just add up and create a bad form of progression inside the game which would make the players not want to play for long now currently as i'm recording this video wisteria 2 actually has 8700 players it is a school Monday. It's yeah, Monday, April 24th. So the game having around 9 to 10k players is still pretty good. 9 to 10k players is actually a lot on the Roblox platform because if you look at some of the AAA games, those games average like 1,000, 2,000 players. So to see a Roblox game averaging 9k is pretty good. But the progression of the game is definitely the main problem for me and I feel like it's the most prominent. But another issue that would also involve itself into all of this would just be the lack of information for players when you're actually playing the game. So for example, if you were to roll a rare clan or have a question on things to do inside the game, instead of the game telling you and guiding you into what you want to do, you just have no clue and it would lead to you being confused. So I was rerolling my clan last night and I actually ended up getting like Shinga Zazua. It's the wind hash written inside the anime. I actually ended up getting his clan. It's just that I have no idea of knowing what my clan does inside the game. I have to use an outside source of information to find out what my clan does. And even still, I, I couldn't find it out. And this is just a minor point. Like, let's say when I was doing the Flesh Samples quest, I had no idea which demons I had to kill because I was just, I was running around for hours, literally hours trying to find out which demons to kill. And there's no way for me to know in game because there's no like highlight or anything. And like I said before, it's good for exploration, yes, but I think it's bad if you're doing it for hours on end and there's nothing being made at all. I also feel like if you have to come to an outside source of information to progress inside a game and that's your only way to learn that information, then something is wrong, especially if you can't find the answer that you're looking for. And that just leads me back to my example like with the clan buffs. You wouldn't know what the clans do unless you look at the Trello for the game. And having to look at the Trello for the game is such, I mean, it's minor for me and I'm pretty sure it's also minor for most people, but shouldn't the information for the game be in the game that we're playing? I, I, I just don't feel like it should be on the outside source. So you have to rely on a YouTube video to find out on what you need to do. And in this video, I didn't even talk about the demon progression for this game, but based off the Slayer progression and some of the things I've heard from other content creators, I can tell that it's just as bad or even worse. Like, for example, there was a quest where you have to find these herbs, and this is specifically during like the early access and testing. The herbs just wouldn't spawn. They literally just wouldn't spawn. So it was you having to choose either if you want to fight the demons to get five demon horns, which also seemed like they wouldn't drop, or find the five herbs, which seemed like they just wouldn't spawn. And at the time we were recording this video, I'm pretty sure that most of the stuff I'm talking about are actually being worked on and just overall being changed, which is good. I personally do feel like this game is not bad. I just feel like the release and start of it is actually pretty terrible, which is the title of this video, Wisteria 2 is terrible right now. Currently the devs, they actually gave out 100 spins, they seem to be pretty thankful, and they also do plan on fixing some of the major bugs and just updating the game in general. So like I said at the start, this isn't me hating on them or anything at all, and I wouldn't just dismiss the game because I do feel like in the future it definitely can become very good. Like, imagine if the NPCs just weren't buggy, the combat gets polished a little bit more, and then the game would actually be very playable and fun. I personally do like Demon Slayer games a lot, so that's why I don't want to see this game fail. I also played Wisteria 1 a lot, I used to play that game a lot. So seeing Wisteria 2 like this, is just kind of crazy to me, because I 
didn't think that this game would be like this. I was looking at the sneak peeks before, it seemed like it wasn't being rushed and they were actually taking their time. And then for the game to be a year in and drop like this is just crazy to me. But there's only so much you can test with like a limited amount of people and content creators don't even count as tester. We all just play the game to drop videos on it like me right now. So yeah, hopefully this video actually did um I guess show off the issue right now. I do want to see like a follow up to this game in like a month or two because I definitely feel like this game has the potential to do good and I feel like it will do good. Demon Slayer games on Roblox generally don't die. Wisteria, no, not Wisteria, Demon Fall and Project Slayers are still averaging players and Demon Fall doesn't even update anymore. So I definitely do feel like this game has the potential and it could be the best Demon Slayer game. It's just that there's gonna have to be a lot to it. I don't feel like the game should even be released right now. I personally wouldn't mind if they just close it and revamp the game, not entirely, but just to a pretty good extent to see with the combat and story and polish some of the quests. But that's just going to be my opinion. And now I want to hear your opinion. This video was more um, serious. I didn't add that much jokes and stuff, I hope, inside the video. So hopefully this video, you did enjoy it. And if you did enjoy it, then you know what part of the video the YouTuber gets to. Huh? If you enjoyed something and the YouTuber said, it, I hope you enjoyed it, you know what's coming next. You know what I'm gonna say, but you don't want me to say it. So yeah, anyways, if you liked the video, like the video and subscribe and, 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 and press share and, and share it to your, to your friend Jaden from school. Because I know he'll enjoy it. And I'm not telling you to do this. I'm telling you to do this. Yeah. Thanks.